Well, hello everyone, welcome back to Speaking Spurs, I'm Mika here on Talking All Things Tottenham, and unfortunately we've got to talk about the fact that we've gone out of the Champions League, a night when we needed two goals to go through, that's what we're talking about tonight. Nil-nil on the evening, we didn't have enough to get over the line, uh, the Romero red card, absolutely ridiculous, I don't know what he was thinking, that essentially, um, whilst we had some momentum in the game, saw all of that die down. And then it ended up being pure desperation. Um, so yeah, that's what we're talking about tonight. So welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Support the video with a like if you enjoyed it, even though we're talking about a depressing evening. And don't forget to put your comments below. So an evening at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Antonio Conte in the build-up had asked for the fans to get behind the boys. But they didn't really give us much to get behind in that first half. We were fairly flat on the evening. A couple of good moments here and there. Just a little stat for you. Um, we had on the night an expected goals total of 0.46 when we needed to score twice to reach the last eight. Far from good enough from us. Um, ball possession... We actually had the greater share, 54% to their 46 But that was because of that great spell that we had in the second half where we really started to edge things up uh, before Romero's stupid tackle that got him sent off. Um, nine shots on... Um, sorry, yeah, nine total shots to AC Milan's 14. No big chances created for us, two for them. Um, obviously, because of our no big chances created, no big chances missed. Uh, both of theirs were missed. Um, we had a pass completion of 83% to their 84. Fouls committed 18 to their 12. Offsides, none, which tells you the lack of creativity for us to their one. We had six corners, traditionally set pieces this season. We've been pretty good, especially from corners. Um, six corners with none. Uh, seeing a chance for us. Um, and they had no corners on the night. So it sees AC Milan progress. Um, for the first time since the 2011... 2011-2012 season um, with their win in the first leg. A goal scored three weeks ago. They had a pretty strong team out tonight as close um, to perfection as what they could have got. Um, it's just annoying. Uh, there was boos at half-time from the fans. Boos again greeted the final whistle. Uh, who can blame the supporters? Their side were dreadful for large periods against a bang average Milan side. As I said, they had as close to a, a full starting lineup as they could, but um, in terms of them as a side and the quality that they've got and the season they've been having, it's not been the best for them. This is a Milan side that should have been there for the taking. I know our squad was looking a little bit thin. Eric Dyer obviously suspended for the evening and he normally turns up for the big, big games. Um, Clement Longley was um, in to, uh, to cover for him on the evening. <sighs> Perisic had to be replaced because of, you know, the amount of minutes that we're not going to be able to see him play. Uh, and I think he's kind of, with all these minutes he's having to play, it's, it's taken away from the player that he really is, which then meant Emerson Royale had to go over to the other side. And actually, he wasn't doing too bad in attacking sense. Emerson Royale, he was getting himself forward into decent positions, cutting inside to midfield again to give Kulusevski a bit more space, but also a bit more support for Hoiber and Oliver Skip. Um, so yeah, then he had to go over to the left-hand side to make way for Pedro Porro to come onto the pitch as Perisic went off. Um and then we didn't really see anything of Emerson Royale after that. However, Porro did add, add a bit of attacking threat. Um, Fraser Forster, I think, actually kept us in the game. He made a couple of good saves in that game for us. Um, but yeah, there was only one change from us on the evening. Um, and I, I, do you know, I'm, I'm just so annoyed about it's Christian Romero. It's the thing that's annoyed me the most. We will get to that in a minute. But yeah, the lineup for this evening: Forster was in goal, Romero, Longley, and Davies making up the back three. Emerson Royale on one side, Perisic on the other. Skip and Hoiberg in the middle with Kulusevski, Son, and Kane making the attacking three. Then subs on the bench, and this is ridiculous as well. Uh, we had space on the bench for another two players. Decided not to put another two there. Would have been a good opportunity just to take some of the young or under 23s whatever development squad to have them on the bench on a Champions League evening get them involved but no we decided to go with not a full squad our bench had two goalkeepers of Austin and Whiteman 
Sanchez, Tanganga, Porro, Saar, Alfie Devine, Lucas Moura, Richarlison and Dan Juma. Dan Juma not used once again, which I found ridiculous. I felt that, you know, Sonny could have come off, put Dan Juma on. Um, a guy that scored six goals in the Champions League last season. I know he scored a goal on his debut and it was a scuff shot, but, you know, this is a guy that, that loves to get involved in the game. He puts pressure on people. I felt Richarlison, when he came on, added a bit of energy. Um, a couple of um, wayward moments from him, but, you know, as I keep defending Richarlison, the lack of game time is making him not very sharp. Uh just a disappointing performance again. But let's talk about it. Christian Romero. In 13 games, I think it is, he's had eight yellow cards and two red cards. Now, this is a guy that everyone keeps saying is absolutely incredible. Yes, his defensive capabilities are amazing. His composure on the ball at times is very good. At times tonight, it wound me up because he actually slowed play down when he had the ball. At times when we didn't need it to happen. You're on a yellow card. Um, we were speaking about it at half time, a few of us, and were saying that he's going to be walking a tightrope. He always plays on the edge, which at times is great. On a yellow card, in that kind of game, emotions running high, the fans on the players' backs to try and perform to get a result. And in the moment, he loves these stupid tackles high up the pitch or in positions where he doesn't need to do it. All he had to do in that position was go with the runner. That's all he had to do. Jockey him. Stay with him. But what does he do? Flies in with a rash challenge. Injures himself in the process. Now we don't know if that's going to be a serious injury. But he didn't look um, very comfortable at all. Physio's with him for quite a while. Um, and then was hobbling off after he was finally given the red card. But it's just an absolute joke. It's a wild challenge. I know he's young. But in big, big games like this... You can't do it. He has let us down. And the most frustrating thing about this is we finally had the game swinging in our momentum. Milan were dropping deeper and deeper. We were starting to create chances. Crosses were finally flying in. And, it, you know, there's no guarantee we were going to score. But if you put cross after cross after cross in, second after second, minute after minute, chances are something's going to come off. Now, when we went down to 10 men, it meant we had to take a player off and um, throw Davinson Sanchez on. Um, and it just, we still tried to pepper away, but it just meant every time Milan managed to recover the ball, we were one man down and we just had to chase about and hope for it. It's honestly, it it's getting beyond a joke now. And I keep saying that I am sick and tired of watching Antonio Conte's football. I've had enough, absolutely had enough. It's just so negative. It's so boring. And if we're not going to win anything under Conte, I would much rather we didn't win a, win something under a more exciting manager, play some decent football. Because ultimately, look, Mourinho was our best chance to win something. We don't know if we would have won something because Daniel Levy sacked him just to save a little bit of money. Um <sighs> Honestly, I'm, I'm so angry right now. Once Romero got sent off, I almost wanted to turn the game off. But I was just I stupidly had that little bit of hope in, in the back of my mind that, hey, we might we might grab a goal and take this to extra time. Knowing full well that if we went to extra time, we were going to get beaten. Milan would have thrown fresh legs on and just run us down. But I've had enough. Like Conte just looked so defeated on the side of the pitch in the last 15 minutes of the game. Um, look, some of the players I will say I was impressed with. I thought Forster did his job very well. He made the saves when we needed to. He reacted well in the moments when he needed to. He was much better than he's been in some of the previous games with the areas that he was parrying the ball back out and to. Um, had a couple of shaky moments towards the end that didn't help us where the ball was coming back to him and he had to clear it. And instead of clearing it straight up the pitch, he hooked them and it went out of play, which gave Milan a bit of time to um, slow the game down towards the end. But it's not like Fraser Forster is known for his ball playing capabilities. That's not the goalkeeper he is. But I, I, was, I was impressed with him. I do think he deserves some credit in the game. Um, other than Romero sending off, I thought the back three were actually cut okay. Um, Longley, I thought, did fairly well. Davies always gives us a steady performance. And I know there's a lot of Davies haters out there. But, you know, the guy does his job. 
rarely ever makes a mistake that costs us in a game. Now he's in at the left side, his centre back rather than his previous left back. Um, Skip and Hoybier, once again, I thought they did well. They just, once again, we need an extra man in midfield. It doesn't have to be someone sitting between them. It just needs to be somebody ahead of them, like an outlet of somebody that can jump in because it meant Emerson Royale had to keep coming inside to help them. And then Kulisevsky then gets drawn back to almost have to be a right wing back at times when Emerson isn't there, which means when we recover the ball, the one thing that our side is meant to do with an attacking three and the wing backs to push on and create uh, a, an overlap on the team, it doesn't happen because... Emerson is inside, Kulisevsky's too far back, so the attack then ends up being Kane and Son and the other the, the wing back on the other side if they can get forward. But we're missing an outlet on the other side, so it makes it very obvious where we're going to attack. So it's easier to defend against. I will say on the night, you know, Milan, some of the players were, played really well. Um, Liao, I thought, stretched us really well. And he's just a difficult player to deal with. His pace is it's incredible. Um, Hernandez, uh, yeah, Teo Hernandez, I thought was very good. Um, their goalkeeper came in to play just when he needed to for that chance late in the game. Harry Kane header. It looked better the right first time round the save. It wasn't as good. As you think, the herder was actually quite close to him in the end, so he just had to get down to it and parry it out. Um, Sanchez, when he came on, actually won a few flick-ons, made a few passes. So despite the fact that he was awful in the last game, when he came on, he did more for us in attacking sense than he did in a defensive sense. Emerson Royale, once again, I thought was having a fairly decent game. He actually made a very important um, header, in our defensive area, that if that had dropped, this was in the second half, it had dropped, it would have been right to Giroud, ready uh, for him to pounce and probably put the ball in the back of the net. So I thought, you know, he was all right. Porro, when he came on, I thought, did fairly well. Um, his free kick was terrible, smashed it straight into the wall, good power, but didn't get the up and down. Um, Sonny, I just, uh, he frustrates me so much at the moment. I, I much rather would have, Sonny came off and seen Dan Juma come on. It's just not clicking for him whatsoever. Um, and the substitutions, I, I know before Romero got sent off, the substitutions I just feel were too late again. I was just waiting and waiting for Conte to make an attacking change and bring Richarlison on, shove him up front next to Kane. Earlier in the game, it's always 10 minutes too late. And as I keep saying on this channel, and I know loads of you agree... It takes time to get into a game. Everybody else is up to speed. It takes at least 10 minutes to get in. So make the sub 10 minutes earlier. Rather than getting 20 minutes out of a player, get half hour out of them. Give them 10 minutes to warm up on the pitch and then 20 minutes to attack and really make an impact in the game. Obviously, it was all for nothing anyway because by the time Richarlison was firing and ready to go, We'd had a sending off, which meant everything changed and more players were having to get back and defend. Um, I will say, though, we did still try and push men forward. There were a couple of situations where we saw Oliver Skip was actually the only man back. Um, very late in the game, he had to make a foul out on the left-hand side to earn himself a yellow card that um, that stopped Milan from going through. It was a two-on-one. Um, that, that foul stopped them from probably scoring a second goal. But it was too late anyway. Um, and it's just so frustrating. It really is. And, and like I was talking about with the cup, we didn't put a strong side out. And as I said, probably to do with the finances within the cup not being enough. But look what has happened. It's another season where we now can't win a trophy. We can't win the league, obviously. We're so far away from that. Top four is becoming more difficult because we're throwing points away constantly, allowing teams like Liverpool to build confidence and come back in. And believe me, their, their confidence is going to be sky high after that 7-0 thrashing of Manchester United, their biggest rivals in the Premier League over the years. That's going to send them onto a massive, massive... Um, Uphill drive now. Brighton still very much a team that people should not write off. Uh, Newcastle, if if they start hitting form again, it's just a massive worry. There's part of me that uh, would quite happily see Conte sacked right now 
bring in somebody like Pochettino that's just going to boost us for the rest of the season. The fitness levels are going to be there because Antonio Conte is a drill sergeant for fitness. Pochettino is a drill sergeant for fitness. But I just, I think, you know, especially with the time away from the club that Conte's had, um, and I know that's not his fault, it was surgery. And also he's had a very tough year. I'm not, I'm not trying to dig out Conte completely. I just don't think he's the right fit for this club. And I know many fans out there feel the same. I think he's a fantastic manager. But unfortunately, his style of football is so boring to watch. There are so many possession teams within the Premier League now that Conte's system works really well if you're able to win the ball back a lot and then press on and you have the right players to do it. We just don't. We don't have it yet. And I know, you know, give it a few more transfer windows and it could be the right team. But I personally don't want to watch this Spurs team play like this until it clicks. I'd rather he admitted defeat, changed the system up and played for something that suits the players that we've actually got. Changed it up completely. And if he's willing to do that until the end of the season, until he can have another transfer window and maybe bring in the players he needs, great. That'd be absolutely fine if he's going to play an attacking brand of football until he gets the team in that he needs to play the counter-attacking football that he needs, then great, I'm all up for that. But I can't see that happening. He's very stubborn. Um, he's got the ability to change because he did it with Inter Milan when he had a load of injuries and Christian Eriksen came in and they went on to do wonderful things. So it can happen. And I, I know a lot of people out there will be going, but we haven't got that midfielder that can create like a Christian Eriksen. We don't need that player We've got a different player that can offer more. We've got Harry Kane, the guy that can drop deep. We've got Richarlison who can play up there. And I think with someone like Harry Kane feeding him, that's intelligent enough to work with him and follow his runs and his patterns of play. Great, expose it. Or if you want to drop Kane back into the number 10 role, you can play Sonny and Richarlison up front as a two. And then Harry Kane behind them. And you still, at times, got your front three if you need it. It's flexible. It's movable. Look, I'm not saying I've got the answers. I'm not a, I'm not a qualified manager of any sort. Um, who am I to tell Anco Antonio Conte how to play these this group of players? But something's got to give. It's, it's not working. It's frustrating. We haven't got the full pace within the, the back three to deal with this system. I feel like players like Eric Dyer are being they're being put in a position where they're going to come under criticism and more pressure time after time. We're not getting the best out of these players. Um, and I know I'm going off on a tangent, but it, it's hit that time. Like, what do we actually do? The season in terms of silverware is gone. Top four is the only thing we can aim for. Like, I'm not saying we were going to win the Champions League. Our team is far off that. But we should have beaten this Milan team and at least been in the next round. The players that we had out there were good enough to do it. It's just... I, I genuinely think had Romero not been sent off, we may have gone on to at least get a goal that would have taken it to extra time. And I know in a season like this, extra time isn't something that a squad like ours needs right now. Um, you know, with two massive injuries in midfield, it probably wasn't the right time for extra time. But hey, it would have just been nice to see a real, real fight. And Romero sending off, it just took it out of us. It was a massive blow to the players. And I can only imagine the feelings and emotions of the players that were on that pitch when he got sent off. I don't know how they're going to deal with it. Is there going to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Romero just to talk about how disappointing he was in that scenario and that he's got to stop doing it? But at the same time, maybe the players have to get round him. But I know, I know what I'd be like. There's no way I'd be walking back into that dressing room and looking at Romero and not having a pop at him, saying like, what are you doing? We were on the front foot. We were dictating play. We were sending in crosses. We were creating chances. And you go and do something like that. Put us down to 10 men. Give them an extra man to overrun us at times. It meant that we had to push further on, leaving one person at the back, knowing they were going to have two there to counter-attack. It's, it's a complete night of frustration. 
and that I know we're all going to be very emotional right now. There's going to be a lot of people saying that they want um, Conte gone. And at the end of the day, the chances of him staying past this season are slim to none anyway. So if the only thing we've got left to play for is a top four place, then do you know what? I just, I would rather he's gone. I would rather he's gone if he's going to be gone at the end of the season. It gives a manager the rest of the season to start playing this, the side the way they want. We've got some players that aren't getting enough minutes. Richarlison could get more minutes, definitely. Dan Juma, what was the point in bringing him in if he's just not going to play? I don't know what he's doing in training and whether he's impressing, but his Champions League pedigree based on last season show you he's, he's an exciting player. Um during the game on Sky Sports, uh, Danny Rose was in the studio talking about the game and his comment was just plain. And his face says it all. If you go on there right now, you can have a look at it. And he just does not look impressed with the fight, the hunger. Um, and then another comment that Danny Rose has come out and said that I actually think is quite hilarious. He says, you can have the best house, but if there's no fur furniture in it, it's irrelevant. Ah... <sighs> I mean, if I was out right now in the car, I'd be listening to, to talk sport. I can only imagine how mad somebody like um, you know, Jamie O'Hara is going right now. He goes in sometimes. His passion for Spurs is absolutely great. Um, but I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments below. What do you think we do now? I mean, there's no point in talking about the game in the comments below. Um, I would like to know your thoughts, however, on Christian Romero. Um, and and the direction that we go with him. Uh, what, what, do you think he needs a ticking off? Do you think he needs an arm around him? Do you do you put a portion of blame on him tonight for us not being able to score that goal in a time when we had momentum? I mean, I just feel like sometimes there's a lot of players out there for us that just don't give enough. There's not enough hunger. Um, and unfortunately, one of the players with the biggest hunger that I see out on that pitch is Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. And what's frustrating about that is he's in a position where he's meant to be a holding midfielder. He's there to break up play. He's not there to create. And I just wish that other people around would pick up on, on that, take his aggression, his, his ability to want more, and go with it. It's ugh, I'm getting really wound up and I'm finding it hard to, to bring out the words. But I'm just so frustrated that not everybody can have that same hunger. I feel like at times Hoybier is having to take on more players than he should. Because there's just the, the runs in front of him aren't good enough. There's not enough going on. Um, our passing as a team has not been the best this season either. I feel so many times, fear, Phil, so many times when we're on the front foot moving forward that there's... There's too many times where people play passes at the player rather than just in front of them. You know what I mean? When somebody's running into space, you just want the ball two yards in front of them so they can run onto it, take it into their stride. Too many times we play the ball either just behind the player's run or at the player so they have to stop. And that means the momentum goes again and then somebody has to push harder than they need to to try and go around a player. It gives the opposition time to settle. I mean, that isn't down to Antonio Conte or his management um, whatsoever. That's just purely down to the players. <sighs> Let's just talk about a few a few stats now. <laughs> Calm myself down. Uh, so we have actually failed to win any of our last five Champions League knockout matches. Uh, we've drawn once and lost four times. So the last time... Uh, we won the knockout game was the 3-2 win over Ajax in 2019 with the Lucas Moura hat-trick. Um, we've failed to score in three consecutive matches in all competitions for the first time since April and May 2019. Um, all 1-0 defence, uh, defence, all 1-0 defeats coming against West Ham, Ajax and Bournemouth. Um and Christian Romero has become only the second Tottenham player to be sent off in a Champions League knockout match, uh, along with Peter Crouch in 2011 against Real Madrid in that season's quarterfinals. That's mad, 2011, we're in 2023. I remember sitting in a pub watching that game 
uh, really frustrated when Crouchy got sent off. Uh, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Uh, and then a little stat on Antonio Conte. Our exit means it's now 10 years since Antonio Conte took a team beyond the last 16 of the Champions League. A remarkably poor record for one of the standout coaches of his generation. His pedigree in this competition is just not good. Not good at all. What a frustrating evening. I'm just... Ugh. And then Milan obviously had a chance near the end, didn't they? 90 plus four minutes uh, off the post from Origi and then the ball kind of bubbled about and Fraser Forster was juggling it about and managed to uh, to get it to safety. Just looking through there, just scrolling through what happened on the night. and How annoying. Ay, 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 ay. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. What do you think? What do we do at this stage? Do we cut our losses? Get rid of Conte? Bring in Pochettino for the... If he's going to be our permanent manager next season, do we just bring him in now? That is my biggest question. Or is there another manager that you want to see? Do we bring in an interim manager till the end of the season and then try and go for someone like Deserby in, in the summer or Graham Potter? Uh, a manager that would much better suit us. Do we go for a Thomas Frank? <sighs> I mean, I really, I really don't know. It's just, it's a frustrating time to be a Spurs fan. And what's worse is we're still sitting fourth in the Premier League. Like, how are we in such a good position when we're playing so badly and we're playing such a poor brand of football? But yet we're still fourth in the Premier League and we, we could potentially secure Champions League football again. But the only thing we get as a club from the Champions League, because we know we're not going to win it, is finances. And I, I know there's a lot of Spurs fans out there that would much rather not get in the Champions League every year, finish fifth, whatever, play Europa League football, have a good chance of winning that, and win an FA Cup, win a Carabao Cup, to win stuff. Winning it, oh, winning games breeds a winning mentality. Winning cups breeds a bigger winning mentality. So then when we're finally in the Champions League, we're in a much better position to push on and go further in the competition. It, it's kind of like, it's almost like we've switched roles with, with Arsenal, where Arsenal's main goal um, in the end towards the end of Arsenal and Arsene Wenger's um, reign, was just finishing in the top four to secure Champions League football, but not winning it. So financially, it's great for the club. Um, it gives you good status. You can attract big name players. But then when you haven't got a chairman that is willing to try and get the best big name players, he will get players and be, and you know, they'll cost a lot. Richarlison costs a lot of money. It's fantastic for Brazil. Hasn't done it for us yet. Hasn't had enough game time, arguably, in my opinion. But there are players out there that we, we could be going for. But he doesn't want to spend the money on those. Because 60 million, it's it's better than spending 100 million, in Daniel Levy's opinion. But I'm just sick of it. I just, I want to win something. I want to win a cup. You know, when we won the cup under Juan de Ramos and Jonathan Woodgate went through against Chelsea and that, he made the header, then the ball got punched back onto him and went in. I didn't care how the goal was scored. I didn't care that it wasn't a great finish. I didn't care that Woodgate didn't even know too much about it. I just love the fact that we won a trophy. And that moment where we saw, you know, Ledley King and, and Robbie King going, going mad with a trophy. That's what we want as fans. We want to be able to celebrate. Just... Yeah. Frustrated. So, look, that's all I want to talk about. Like, not a good enough performance. So my questions to you as Spurs fans is, how do you feel about Christian Romero? Um, what what do the, the players need to get them motivated better to win games like this and get up for it? What do we do about Antonio Conte? Do they force him to change his system? Or do they sack him and bring in another manager till the end of the season? And if so, who is that man that we bring in? Do we bring in Pochettino now? 
do we go for a caretaker manager till the end of the season and bring in someone else? And if so, who is that manager? They're the things that I want you to talk about in the comments and then we'll collate everything together and I'll make a video on people's responses so we can talk about what Spurs fans actually want. Thanks for sticking around. I know it's very depressing. Um, it's a poor evening for us. And yeah, I have been Kieran from Speaking Spurs. And until next time, come on you Spurs.